we are we're rolling um let us know in the chat if you are watching the show live if the audio is doing fine uh, otherwise we'll uh we'll get we'll get started yeah i was getting a little robot voice there but it seems to have worked itself out oh good um <clears throat> we are going through yet another snowstorm here in jersey so i'm stuck mm. in this i'm stuck in the house and not going to the studio where all my settings are uh, so instead mm. tiffany's letting me use her twitch rig which of course you can use uh, and enjoy uh, over on twitch.tv slash comic pop tv watch tiffany play some games it's gonna happen later tonight it's gonna be a good time um, nice I, I i took in her last kingdom hearts show oh yeah nice as did i i wasn't there there but i was around you were editing in the corner i was yeah exactly <laughs> which is very fun um what was it? Adam Azamoa says uh, in the super chats. First, you what it is? Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. You what it is? It is what it is. Damn right. So, all right. Uh, let's let's jump into it. The chat didn't completely overrun with like you guys sound like shit, which they would if it was <laughs> even a little bad. So we're good. <laughs> I um, guess we're okay then. So, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Hi, I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. Uh, this is Elseworlds Exchange, a show where we take a comic uh, idea or concept from the geek world at large and then uh, just kind of hash it out for about an hour, let you know uh, what, we're, what our thoughts are on these uh, these goings-on of the day. Um, Adam Asmoa came back and was like, you know. He was just, oh. That's what he meant. So thank you, sir. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the effort. Um, so what was it? Um... Yeah, so the, the concept that we're doing here today is we were um, talking a little bit about like what we want to talk about today uh, because we this this show is a well oiled machine and we have a lot of uh, <laughs> we, we have a lot of planning to do. Um, oh yeah. But in uh, but one of the ideas that we had was this concept that came out recently. Um, there's this dude in Chicago who is giving away his comic book store. Uh, now I sent you a link to the main thread or the main website you did. Uh, about it. Um, but to give you a little bit of a rundown, it, it's not quite as cut and dry as all that. It's more like, mm -hmm. so there's this lawyer who runs a comic book store on the side in Illinois, right outside of Chicago. And he's clearly planning on closing the store. And what he wants to do is, instead of being like, I gotta close the shop, that's it. Superficially, what he's saying is, why not give it to someone who wants to run a comic book store? Hey, whole thing is all just ready to go. Turnkey operation. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So instead of being like, you know, I'll just give it to a friend or, you know, whatever, he decided to hold like a contest kind of deal. Uh, so it's like, you could win a raffle and get my comic book store. Yeah, it's not it's like a golden ticket. Exactly. All you have to do to win is you got to spend twenty five dollars to mm. submit a essay, uh, and your essay is about why you should own a comic book store. <laughs> and eventually, he will select a winner. And then, so long as you fill out all the paperwork, move to Chicago, uh, yeah. work out all the deals with all the all the established uh, current. Um, companies that are in place oh you also have to pay rent of course on the particular store it's in you can't leave or move yep. you know, all these mm -hmm. different weirdo provisions that completely suck um so but it, 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 it was not as advertised um obviously not. as you could probably imagine right like who's just gonna give you a comic book store um, What's that old saying? If it's too good to be true, it's because it probably is. Exactly. Uh, of course, there's a lot of other things going on with that. He's a self-published comic book creator. He wanted to get a lot of fresh eyes ah. on his material and all sorts of other blah, blah, blah. Looking for pre free promo. That's why you're not going to find it. a link in the description below this video. You can find it if you just Google it. Google Chicago Comic Shop Giveaway and you will find it. Um, but I saw a lot of hilarious chatter about people being like, Oh, cool! You, you you yourself can own a dying comic book store in a you know dwindling industry with ungrateful fans. Can, and can I also win like a like a newspaper printer while I'm at it? Right, too? exactly. Like, oh man, you yourself can win a fancy schmancy typewriter. Uh, it'll work terrific. Um, that being said, it'll go, it'll go great with my VCR repair shop. Right. Good. Uh, good. Good. Good deep dive there. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so from the uh, concept of giving away a comic book store, I thought, like, wouldn't it be fun as a thought exercise to be like, what would you do if you, not if you won this, but more like mm. if you rubbed a lamp and a terrible looking CG blue genie came out that looked weirdly <laughs> like Will Smith. And <laughs> after all the hilarious, like, woohoos and nahs he gave you, uh, and after welcoming you to Earth, he would, uh, he would say, <laughs> what do you want? And you'd have to also be like, I want to, I want to have a comic book store. Uh, and it has to be turnkey. Basically, what if somebody handed you a comic book store? Right. Just like, you have this comic book store, it's... And and all the convenience that might be associated with it, it's nearby, you know, you know them, you have the finance to be, to be able to support it. But more like, what would you do? You know, your, your local comic book store is going out of business, and the guy's like, here, good luck. Figure it out. Just take it. Just take it. Get this thing the hell out of here. Um, by the way, uh, so this is the premise. And the idea is, like, what would you do with your own comic book store? Um, and I thought it would be fun because, like, we have our own love affairs with comic shops. But we are also, mm -hmm. we're digital exclusive people. We know all about the digital yeah. market. We ourselves, on a previous show, were talking about how, how important the digital market is and how digital exclusive books are a really big thing. So obviously, we've got a lot of different ideas, and I'd love to just explore those. Even if we don't, even if they're half baked, it'd be fun to just hash them out. Oh yeah. Uh, but before the half -baked we baked ideas are the most fun. Sometimes. That's right. Yeah, th that's what the show is: half baked all by itself. Um, in the uh, in in the live show, we have this thing called super chats where people submit questions uh, to us while the show is going on. We take those super chats, we answer them periodically throughout the show. Um, it helps us keep a roof over our heads, or in that case, um, a studio that I can't get to in the snow. Um, <laughs> It's a big, big help, and uh, that's why we do it. But we encourage you, if you want to be participating in the show live, uh, to use the Super Chats, like these fine people did uh, just now. Uh, so we mentioned Adam. Uh, Cam says, Sal looking like Jack Black from Enemy of the State. Thank you. I've never wanted to look like Jack Black, so I appreciate the compliment. Uh, Mr. Roboto. Jack Black now with his big bushy beard? I, I, you know, YouTube keeps thinking I want to watch it, which is, like, incorrect. They're, that's a, that's an assumption that they did not need to make. Uh, I am not interested in his like not gamer channel that his son it set up. Seems for him. wholesome enough. It's cute, <laughs> but I don't care about Jack Black. I didn't see Kung Fu Panda three, and that's pretty much all I need to say about that. Uh, I did, and it wasn't worth it. We saw Kung Fu Panda two the other day, actually, and we were like, "This is pretty dope." Um, it is. And then it's like, and I go, and that third one looked like freaking ass. Boy, was it. It's amazing <laughs> that you can... Well, when is that a thing, when the middle of your trilogy is the best one? Uh, Terminator. Uh, ah. Godfather. Yeah. Like, so sometimes that happens. You just overstay your welcome. Um, Fair enough. Mr. Roboto says, My idea, only sell DC Comics and Archie. Uh, good luck. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it, like... It's, it's an idea. And hey, listen, like, DC would support you. Oh, yeah. Um, J. Joseph Frazier says, Those new Batman the Animated Series action figures make me wonder, what are both of your thoughts on a revival series, whether that's in the form of a TV show or straight-to-DVD movie or comic? Um, a, a Batman the Animated Series comic has worked, would work. I think that's the, mm. the easiest, quickest, and cheapest, and probably most fan-rewarding version you could go with. Joel? Uh, yeah, I mean... It, again, we talked about how important digital comics are. If they came out tomorrow and they're like, hey, we got a bunch of people involved from the original Batman, the animated oh. series. It's going to be digital, and you know, it's going to be like uh, every week now, you're going to get a new one That'd for a dope. reasonable price. I'd be like, I'm, sign me up. I will be the first in line. Seriously. Um, so there you have it. Uh, Eric Meyer says, issue 420, adult smoking lounge and comic library, revenues mostly membership, but have pull lists for anyone who wants them. You stole my idea. That was gonna be my pitch. All right. Well, well. I'm sure we can flesh it out. Rusky nine one one zero says, "Not in the office today." No, it's snowing, and I'm stuck. I, I would have to. I would have had to have dug myself out, drive through the snow, which, admittedly, it's only a mile or so away from my house. But then I'd be stuck at the studio as opposed to stuck here. Um, it wouldn't be fun. Yeah, it would not be. Uh, Brevin Campbell says, "Make a good online comic shop." Big smiley face. You're you're reading my mind, my friend. And Joshua Wright says, "Love you guys as always. Few stories last. Uh, few stories last. Doing strictly comics or even primarily these days. I'd make it a gaming store that also sells comics. Um, yeah, that's kind of the future of uh, of GameStop, certainly. Unless you know, except for bankruptcy. 
Also that, yeah, this, you see, uh, my big thing for a comic book store, if I was to be given one, and it's something that we're already seeing stores doing, you have to diversify yeah. what you do. You cannot get by just doing comics anymore. I know all the stores around me got their tabletop stuff. They got their Warhammer, their Magic the Gathering, their Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, their yep. whatever, because that's what you got to do now. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the f I guess before we get into what we would do with a comic shop, you have to talk about what comic shops look like today. Mm. And what you, what you look for in a comic book store. Because maybe what you want in a comic shop isn't what you would do with a comic shop. You know, like, yeah. for me, uh, a comic book store that works today has a lot of things going for it. For one, uh, they are usually, the, the, the newer shops, the shops that are really successful, um, that, that, like, succeeded in getting a business loan, as opposed to shops that have been in business for 30 years and somehow, like, got grandfathered into the rent or something. Um, yeah, yeah. Those, they're, they're usually, they have a lot of space, even if they don't have a lot of room. You know, like they, mm. they they limit their inventory so that the 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 customer can walk around without having to bump into anything. Because um, you'd need to. Usually, there's a very very scarce amount of back issues, if any at all. Um, no old books. Those books are either in their storage unit or they sold them, you know, at cost or at a loss at comic book stores or online. Um, that, yeah, that's what stores are doing now. Only order as much as you'll think you'll need, or else you will just drown in back issues, and that will clog up the aisles, that will hurt foot traffic, and it'll make your store look unprofessional and cluttered. Exactly. By the way, it, it looks like the, the, the back issue is pretty much dying, because uh, I was looking at, like, a, actually, one of my local shops was having a fun dollar bin sale, which I really enjoy doing, mm -hmm. uh, and going to... Um, their dollar bin sale had like all these old books from like from the 70s up until the 90s and also books from six months ago a lot of books from like six months ago to a year ago and they're just just piles of them and i'm like oh yeah i remember buying this for cover price mm -hmm. it's a dollar yep like and many back issues bins at comic book shows, at trades, uh, you could find, like, they are worthless. Mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. So, like, there's no cost, there's no benefit to, like, keeping them or buying them at their cover price when you could just wait six months and then you can get them at a loss that is so low, it's so, de it's, it must be depressing to be a comic it's book store owner. It's practically giving them away, and in fact, uh, last free comic book day, I was looking through some stacks, and I'm like, oh, wow, you got most of the All-Star Western from Jimmy Paul. Oh, oh yeah. Man, I loved this series so much. Can I buy these? And the dude's like, just take them. <laughs> I ordered way too many of them. Like, he was clearly sick of moving them from shelf to shelf, and, like, his eyes almost lit up like, like you're a fan. Just take them. Yeah. I, it, it, it pained me to throw them away. I was really almost going to get these things the hell out of my store. I did, and I have them still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two Mikes, One Take says, F the snow and have a great show. Thank you, Two Mikes. I appreciate it. Mm. Uh, Robert Carr, what are your thoughts on comics slash restaurants, or comic store restaurants? Mm. Uh, I think it's a terrible idea, only because, like, so I'm having a burger, and I have ketchup on it, and I'm reading my new book. I remember... My comic shop, my old, my, my comic book store, the comic book store I grew up on, which is not the comic shop that I shot the old channel out of. Um, it was right next to my pizzeria. Yeah. And I've ruined many a comic, like reading comics while eating a pizza. And mm. it's just, I, I have been conditioned as a child. Like when I read comics, I read them separate. Like I never eat near a comic because I know Same. I will ruin it somehow. Yeah. It's a dicey proposition. Again, I've seen a lot of stores go and try and use the uh, Starbucks model. So yes. like comics and coffee, comics and cafe. That's a little better because, you know, most coffees usually got a top on them. You're probably not going to spill. You know, you got like little croissants, nothing too messy. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, like, do, do you remember the comic book store in Kick-Ass? Yes. The comic book store that doesn't exist, that like no one owns. Um, Only in fantasy land does that exist. Yeah. I love the idea of, like, a Starbucks comic shop. I just don't see it. And I've never been in one. 
there's a there's a place a couple towns over from me. It's not a comic shop. It's a manga shop and cafe, and they got like a bunch of weird imports, and they got like a bunch of like Filipino coffee and weird drinks from the east that you've never tried before. I don't know if that place is still open, but it really. It, it was tiny. That was the other thing, but it super felt like going into another planet when I saw that. Oh, stuff. yeah. Oh, in Manhattan, right outside of Bryant Park, there's a bookstore that sells, like, Asian market, uh, like, mangas and anime, and but also, like, just straight up, like, every version of manga, any kind of ma- uh, amount of manga you could find, plus art books. And, and they had, like, a yeah, Western yeah. comic section as well. Um, Do they? Yeah, and it's super cool, but they also have, like, a little cafe restaurant thing, and it's like, the whole thing is really neat, and it is the closest thing that you can find to something like that. I know Cam in the Super Chat says, I always thought of a comic shop diner would be cool. Throw in some comic-themed arcade machines and e-comic kiosks, and you have yourself a cool hangout. That, my friend Cam, is exactly the problem with Mm. having a, a comic shop that caters to people who fill up a booth and don't leave. Is that yeah. you turn it into a hangout? I remember I I actually suggested to my old old comic book store retailer. Um, again, my pizzeria had like a Marvel vs. Capcom arcade machine. We're playing the hell out of that all the time. And we go over to Pegasus Enterprises. They don't exist anymore, so it's okay to say. Uh, and cool. Pegasus uh, used to and I, they had they had lots of room. And I'm like, why don't you throw in a couple of arcade machines in here? And he goes, that's what I want. It. I want a bunch of teenagers hanging out in here longer than they already are. Comic book shops have a main major problem because again if you're jamming up my store you're not buying anything exactly you're taking up space that could be occupied by someone who wants to buy something from my store that's a thing there's a great place out in victoria last time i was there called legends and this place was set up like a bookstore they had spinner racks at the front with new like issues but only a couple so you would have to actually get in there earlier if you wanted to get it the man at the front wore a suit and he exuded this presence that said, I am at work right now. This is a place of business. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do not hang out here. And I'm like, you, sir, yes. Right. I get your message, sir. And yes, I. Uh, it's like the soup Nazi. Uh, one, one amazing Spider-Man, 313. Mm-hmm. Like, move on. It was exactly like that. I didn't I mean. get my comic shop weekly guide. You want that? <laughs> $3. $3. But it's supposed to be free. <laughs> no comic for you. Yeah, would you get out? <laughs> uh, and Mr. Roboto says, any Canadian comics sold only in Canada? Uh, I think Chapter House probably has some deals, like for Captain Canuck and stuff. Mm. And finally, Decon 690. Yes, you gotta diversify like manga. I like comic book stores with Japanese manga so I can look at both sections from East and West. That seems to be like a real sticking point for a lot of comic book stores I know that I go to where they're like, no, we are a Western comic book store. We will not sell out to the manga menace. Meanwhile, you go to uh, like uh, chapters there and their manga section is bigger than their comic section. Right. Uh, There's a comic shop in Livingston, New Jersey called New World Manga. I used to go there, too. Uh, I've been there to a couple of their midnight releases. It is called New World Manga primarily manga they do have some comics uh and they also sell like a little couple statues very it's actually interesting the whole store is like a square and all their inventory is on the walls of the square and the middle is filled with nothing (laughs) until it's time for Yu-Gi-Oh and shit and then Ah. it's tables and tables and tables uh so and and that's kind of like the, the, the comic book stores that I see now that are successful, that are working, that are at least making money, they are diversifying. They have a, a robust amount of uh, media. They don't just sell Western comics anymore. They also sell manga. They also sell games, tabletop games, uh, role-playing games, RPGs. Um, they sell miniatures, figures, toys. Funko Pops are a big deal. Collectibles, yeah. you should call it. Like, and then whatever that whatever that word implies. So, like, collectibles. Um, but that is what I see. And that's the, the future of comic shops, at least from what I've noticed. Or at least it's the present. If, uh, if you want to turn a profit, that seems to be the way that the winds are blowing. We are a pop culture curio shop. That also functions as a comic store. Ooh, as well. I also forgot uh, cards as well. Like you got to sell mm, cards. I know that in the '90s slash early 2000s, that was a big deal. Like that was the money maker for my shop. It was Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and Magic: The Gathering. Oh yeah. 
Um, and I, I think it still does, probably to some extent, but it's not quite where it was. Um, All the ones in my stores usually have the big case where it's like, you know, $60, $50, yes, we do trade. Oh, wow. Mine, every every shop I've ever seen, it's usually just, it's like it was in the 90s, where it's like, here are the boxes of cards, uh, each each bag of cards is $5, you know, knock yourself out. Um there's, well, like, there's a place here called Grey Guardian Games, and I think that's that's their bread and butter, Magic the Gathering. But they also have like a little tiny place off to the side for new comic books. Oh, okay, so but as as far as I'm aware, if you're looking at a newer comic book store or a really successful comic shop, back issues are gone, collectibles mm. are in. Uh, you know, you don't have a big, big, huge inventory of comics. Um, it's mostly new stuff. And other stuff. Yeah. Um, so, what would you... Oh, and, and uh, what do you like in a comic book store? What's your pref- preferred comic shop experience? Again, I like a strong focus on trades, on absolute editions, collected editions, rare issues. If you have some rare issues behind the counter, I'd be like, ah, oh, this is a place of culture and taste. Again... <laughs> This, this place, Legends, I'm talking about, they had that too. I'm like, ah, so you know, this this is a more adult take on a comic book shop is what this is. This is for the discerning reader amongst us. Of course. I know that uh, <clears throat> I'm actually kind of impressed. My, my usual shop, Zap Comics, always has old school classic comics that you like, that are keys, as, as the parlance goes, uh, key issues that you need or want, or that are important or relevant to the con- to, like, to the context of the times, um, they're always up uh, behind the counter, or they're like actually in between the the back issues racks, um, and they're just and they're always rotating. It's never the same book. It's not like I'm I'm always seeing a copy of Radioactive Man number one. It's no, it's it's <laughs> it's constantly rotating to the point where it's like, did you sell this book? And it's like, yeah, no, that's sold, and we rotated it out. Like you'd never know week to week if those books were over there because they're they're con. It's it's like Apu when he's living with the Simpsons, putting like what was it peas or beets yeah. or whatever like in cans. No, and he's, got got to move these. Yeah, they'll never move in the in the in the in the cupboard. Ooh, peas. <laughs> haven't thought of them thanks mom exactly you gotta put them on the you gotta put them at eye level um it's it's a it's an ingenious operation they've got going um but also very different from what i've seen like if i go to like newbury comics for example that's a very much a store that for me feels like where comic shops are going if you ever been to newbury mm-hmm. comics it's uh if you, it's like an fye uh in every way it's an fye but it's but it has comics in the title <laughs> Like, literally, that's what it is. It's just an FYE. Like, we sell music and magnets with dicks on them and, like, (laughs) poop, you know, hand squeezers and, oh, also some comics if you need those, but vinyl records and also, like, T-shirts. Like, it's just a mess. Um, So, uh, Spencer's Gifts. Spencer's Gifts. It's the exact opposite of what I want from a combo going experience. Um, Mm -hmm. Gotta diversify. I know. Stuart McNally says, uh, we have UK chain that sells Western comics alongside manga with toys, figures, etc. I can't imagine a comic shop not selling Western and Eastern, to be honest. I agree. I think that's that's a staple. You gotta sell manga, no matter what. Um, Mm. Well, I think the thing, too, is that a lot of people who own comic book shops are older geeks who see that as something encroaching on their fandom right there. It's like, well, I didn't grow up with this, so I don't like it. Well, and that's the thing. I've seen a. I, I was. I saw a fascinating little like mini documentary from a comic shop in California, where the guy's talking about like what it's like to own a shop, and like he goes, most people who own a comic book store aren't business owners. They're not people who got into it to become a business owner. They love comics, and so they're treating their business like a comic book fan as opposed to like a business owner. And so it's like they don't think about things like how the room, how the how the the place is structured uh what the what the experience is like for women and men and children like yeah. how it smells in there like it's 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 mm-hmm. important to think about how the what the lighting is like uh also about like how to run a business and how to operate the books and how to like diversify your product and and increase your bottom line it's like it's a whole thing um indeed which you know it's funny because our, our exercise is literally like, what would you do if you don't know anything about that? You're just giving a comic book <laughs> uh, But we're getting there. Uh, Adam Estep says, uh, my comic shop is a bar, like beer. Uh, he had a beer with Jason A. I assume that Jason Ooh. Aaron. Um, a comic shop as a bar is interesting. Again, mm. I think that would work, but only in like, 
certain cities. Certain cities. It'd have to be like you'd have to you have a huge amount of foot traffic, a huge amount of adult population, and trendy young people. Yeah, exactly. I I don't see it working as like oh I have a comic book store I'll just flip it and turn it into a bar like that's not gonna work. Um, the the t the town I live in, small town northern Canada, predominantly old retired age people. I know a comic book store would not work here, and that's why I have to go two towns over when I want to go to free comic book day or something. It's true. Sam Anderson, how would you deal with trades versus floppies? Relegate floppies to just pull list customers or on display? Take it away. Uh, again, I would steal the idea from Legends. Here's what came out this week. There is only a set amount of them. I did not order more than I need. If you want them, you better get here early or you better pay for a pull list. I've noticed that uh, a lot of comic shops in my area have had the problem where like they've run... Where, like, they're like, we're out! And it's very unapologetic, and they're just kind of like, you can go to another store and get them, probably. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be kind of like the nature of the beast right now. I would definitely treat floppies with extreme prejudice, where it's like, the books are here, you know, you, you gauge what your foot traffic is like, what your clientele is going to be. Um, the pull list thing is a whole thing, and actually there's a great uh, comic line discussion that we did uh, over on this channel about it. You can watch it uh, over on our comic line playlist. Um we talk about the pull list and how it's archaic and needs to change. Um, I don't know what I would do with the pull list. I, I think for me, I would probably just like maintain what pull lists were in the system for the cut for the the store that we were to inherit. Yeah, and kind of like wear it down or start to Im, uh, Im, try my new pull list concept. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I think that it's like it's a problem pull lists. Um, mm. It, it, you're always on the hook, and your job as a retailer is to make more money. So it's like you got to think about that. And you got to be, like, realistic about how that's going to hurt you. Yeah, for real. Especially in an age of digital as well. Yeah. And that's got to be serious. I know that Comixology had that whole, like, retailer deal. That's dead. That's so mm -hmm. gone. Um, mm -hmm. Which I'm sad about. But you know what? Like, there's ways around that. Uh, Matthew Mosley says, pay day tonight, here's a little something. Thank you very much, Matt. Oh. I appreciate it. And Mr. Roboto, how do you think uh, a shop only selling Batman, maybe? Just a Batman store? Uh, unlike the comic book industry, which I think DC is supported almost entirely by Batman, I don't think a comic book <laughs> store can be supported entirely by Batman. Mm. Um, Cam also says, uh, I would like just once to enter a comic shop that's clean, organized, and well lit. Yeah, that's a problem. I love comic book stores. I love comic book store people, but there are so many places where it's like, I would never bring a date here. I would never bring my mother here. I oh, would no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I respect it here. He also said having signs would be nice. Yeah, definitely. Clear, you know, signage that indicates what you're looking at and where to get what you're what you're looking for is very mm. important. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, certainly, if I were to be gifted a comic book store, if we were to be given a comic shop, like, here's, here's your store... Uh, it, oh, I'm sorry. We were we were still talking about like what we look for in our own comic, what what we like, what yeah, our experience yeah. is. Um, so, Joel, I'm sorry. You were you were in the middle of your story. Uh, no, no, I, I was done there. I'm just saying. No, yeah, right. there are some, there are some rough looking comic stores out there, and it would be nice to you know fix the image a little bit. Like I said, that store legends that I'm just gushing all over. Yeah. About. The, the the man at the counter wore a suit, Sal. He wore a suit to work in a comic book store. Would you want to wear a suit? Would you do that? If that's what I had to, maybe a nice, tasteful blazer. Maybe mm. not a suit every day. Maybe a sports jacket or something. Yeah, draw, uh, dress like Svelte Kevin Smith, where he's got like the graphic ah. tee and the blazer. Um, there you go. I know that for me, for my money, and this is so contrary to how I know a business should be run. My favorite kind of comic book store to go to is the crappiest kind of comic book store you can find. There's I, a nice quality about it. I love going to a comic shop that is claustrophobic, that is choked with books, that has thousands of back issues in very old, tattered long boxes that have seen action more than the uh, comic shop owner ever has. And, uh, you know... <laughs> the just, Android's Dungeon is what you're saying. Right, exactly. Just very classic, old-school comic shop, but has a, an owner that is realistic about what he's selling. I went to one of those comic book stores that is like that, but the owner is delusional and so you know like he had 
I will. I, here's a story. He had, a, he had a short box full of wizards. A short box of wizards. I was like, oh, jackpot. I'll give this guy a tenner and I'll get all these wizards. And that I'll be overpaying for it. Because that'd be like if you went to go find... And you found a trash bag full of golf magazines. And the lady who threw it away went, oh, no, 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 no. you got to pay for those golf magazines. Oh, uh, these are 30 years old, madam. Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get mine. I offer $10. He's like... Oh, those aren't for sale. <laughs> They're not for sale. I had to wow. lift I had to lift garbage off of it to see what was in it. Because he didn't care about the store. I'm like, dude, you are done. This store is... Like, you must either own the building, which you <laughs> don't, because it's a strip mall. You no. gotta be crazy. This is a different store and a different wizard than the one that I had on another store that is equally messed up, where I asked how much one wizard was, and he had to look up online what the cover value price was. I'm like, you gotta be crazy. It's called, you buy anything in the store, you can keep the wizard for free. That's that's the deal. Whatever. I won't sell you these old wizards. Amazing. No. Those aren't for sale. I guess I could let you have one. I, could, I would almost respect him more if it's like, oh, I'm not going to sell you these old hustlers. They might be worth something. Right? I, I actually had a friend uh, when I was growing up who had classic Playboy magazines, like, from the 60s and 70s. Mm. Really old stuff. And, like, some of it actually would have been valuable. I actually read, yeah. I read an article believe it or not, from one of those Playboy magazines because the cover promised an interview with Stan Lee. And nice. there's this there's this great j cartoon image of Spider-Man climbing a wall and he's got his mask off and it's Stan's head. Like it's Stan I Lee. I in this that image. It's a great image, but it's I think it's from that Playboy magazine interview. And it was like a fan... I was like, this is an amazing interview. Like, this is gripping. Uh, you know, in my, in my porno magazine that my friend is... My friend's dad hid in the attic. But, uh... Yep. Really, really great. Uh, there, there, there's at least some inherent value in those wizards. You give, you give those to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, but only. Oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. Did young Stephen King write a story for these? Uh, what is it for these old wizards? I don't bingo. Think so. Yeah, exactly. There's no. Yeah, there's no like old like Alan Moore or Grant or Grant Morrison or Frank Miller short stories or mini comics that are exclusive wizards that are you can only get within the pages of those. No, there's no value. Uh, but the, the guilty pleasure for me, the old school comic store for me, is is what I like. I, because I'm basically trying to create like a little comic book store in my studio that isn't really a comic book store so much as it's just it's just it's just. I always wanted like I remember reading an old wizard interview where they were like talking about how they went into their archives. They had like thousands of comics like in the storage room that they checked when they had a question or like when someone asked them something. And I'm like. I would love to have that kind of resource, like a little, like, oh, yeah. like you know, a little library that I could just consult whenever I need to. Um, and so I'm, I've been ever building it, and that's more or less what I'm doing with these stores. But I also love seeing them and, and being like, oh man, and and working out a deal where it's like, oh, you buy ten, you get like half of them off, like you know that kind of thing. Um, but that's more of like an experience than it is like a a shopping experience. Like I'm looking to be nice. to travel through time and also ex explore, you know, comics as opposed to like just I need to get a trade. I'll go to the store. Mm. Um, uh, another thing I've noticed about comic book stores, and I feel super old because like Jesus Christ, Alan Dorkin was making fun of this back in the day when he was writing comics, and it's like, man, you notice most comic book stores that are still around now are in really bad neighborhoods. Hmm, that I have not noticed. Uh, I, I gotta say, actually, most comic book stores that I go to are in, like, uh, either, like, empty places, like, areas that, where there's nothing, uh, or they're in areas that are, like, densely populated and they've been there forever. The, uh, the place I've gone to for, like, my last two free comic book days, and again, not the store's fault, but just rabid crack problem in this area there. And when, yeah, obviously, when, you know, people who enjoy the crack see, oh, free comics, I'll go in there. So I'm just trying to grab my free comic book day issues, and I'm like, I feel uncomfortable here. That's we that sucks. That's an uncomfortable situation all around. Um, yeah. Kane's World, where I live, there's a comic shop called Third Eye Comics. Oh, I know that comic shop. Uh, that has two buildings, one for comics and manga, and building two is for games. Oh. Nice work if you can get it. Uh, there's a comic shop. There was a comic shop in Booton. Uh, now it's just a game store. But it, was, it started as a game store, then it wanted to become a comic, a comic shop, and then it went, oh, comics, there's no money in it, and dropped comics entirely, became a game shop mm -hmm. again. Um, 
And they have two sections. Like, they had two buildings. The first building was for gaming, and new issues only, that's it. And only, like, the top 20 books. That's it. And they still closed that section. Uh, but they had two rooms, and one room was dedicated entirely to gaming. And I think if you are gonna open your, sh your store up for gaming, you gotta have, like, a dedicated space for that shit. You do. Speaking of dedicated space, uh, sadly this place closed down, but the legendary Meltdown Comics in LA, they had a podcast stage where people would come in and celebrities would do their shows and stuff from there and they'd have like viewing parties and stuff. And I thought that was such a cool idea to make it like a hip happening space for people to go to. And obviously you get foot traffic through your store because it's in the back. It's sad that place couldn't make it because I thought that was an amazing idea. Yeah, I think Third Eye Comics did that with the Nerdist. And because oh. uh, I've been to that shop that do does that exact thing. They have a podcasting stage and it's like, a, they have like open mic nights and interviews and stuff like that. And it's through the Nerdist. Uh, Amy Dallin huh. works there. It's a, it, it's a, it was a neat store it's also very, it was like, I really, it, I, when I went to LA and Anaheim for, uh, you know, whining and dining back when we were in a much better uh, <laughs> place, um, mm. we, uh, I, I got to spend like just a full day in LA by myself and like, Tiffany would have loved that store because it was an indie store. Like it was a indie comic shop. Can you can you imagine an indie comic shop? Like there was no, no mainstream comics. There were like there were a couple of, ga of gaming areas. Like here's a here's a spot where you could just plop down on a on a beanbag chair and play a Sega Genesis system or an NES or whatever. Like really, really, it was very cool. I was like, this is a cool store. It's a little. It's almost a little lost on me. But like, man, and that had the, the the Nerdist stage and everything in it. That's um, that's the perfect thing too, you know, when opening any business, not just a comic shop, but you know, location, location, location. Yes, you're gifted a comic book store. You gotta do all the metrics on that area. Uh, mm. For me, if it's like you're you're given this comic book store, one of the first things I'm doing is going like, what's the what's the demographic of this area? What about the all the areas? What about all the comic shops within like driving distance of my shop? Perfect example, that place I keep bringing up, Legends. It was a more higher-end, more hoity-toity comic shop within walking distance of three other places that sold comics. One that was more of a game-centric place and the other one that was more of like a pop culture curio place. And mm. it did my head in this idea that these three stores could exist within walking distance of each other. Yeah, I've never seen that. And I, I can't imagine any of them sitting well with that idea. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Th I wish I could have shown this to you because I'm like this. This is like seeing a unicorn in the wild. Yeah, like w oh, I'm opening up a comic store. I figured I'd open it like a couple blocks down from the other one. Mm -hmm. Like that's either hubris or you know something I don't. I think it speaks to the area, which is very hoity-toity, very trendy. Yeah, um, very young too. Oh, okay, that's smart. Um. What was it? Uh, Kyle Johnson says, Hey guys, I can't stay long at work, but uh, here's a little something from my favorite channel. Thank you very much, Kyle. You're awesome. Aww, thank you. Uh, Rusky910 has a Canadian-centric question. He says, I live in an area similar to Joel. We have a comic shop for maybe three years, and they were doing everything you're talking about. It's just not going to work in smaller areas. That's right. It, it isn't. It really doesn't. And again, living in the Canadian North, there's only, not even just comic stores, stores in general don't make it here. Again, there's like $3 stores where I live, and so many other big chain stores have just failed, and our mall is practically empty now. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, no, our mall is dying. I remember very. there was a very, very, like, it, it's funny. My mall, I've been going to since I was a kid, like, the, the mall, um... It had a comic shop. I know it did. Because Scott McDaniel did a signing there, and my mom dragged me down there to get, like, the Ray and Deathstroke number zero signed. Oh, nice. And we had to buy them from that shop. And I'm like, there's a comic book store at the mall? I thought that was just the place where my mom bought, like, clothes. Mm. Um, and no one remembers that shop. Like, nobody. It must have been open in 1992... And then closed. Like, that. the mall could not support a comic book store. And that was in the height no. of mall fever. Um, and comic fever, for that matter. Yeah. M malls used to be excellent uh, tax shelters. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, 
man. We should do an episode. Bad, we're not going to, but we should do an episode where we just talk about how like malls need to be converted into old age homes and 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 uh, Canadian and uh, like condominium communities. <laughs> Hey man, that that sounds like a like an episode we can do on Patreon is what that sounds. That's like. a good one, yeah. Um, we got to move on. Uh, Heartless Fang on break from class for a few minutes. Just wanted to throw some love at you guys. Hopefully, uh, hope to send a package soon. You guys have a good one. Thank you very much, Heartless Fang. You're awesome. We will. Pricey Yeti Forty. Hey Sal, have you checked out the Spider Man PS4 art book and see the horrible designs for Spider Man and Mister Negative? Keep up the good work. I did because I was gifted it on an, our live show. Mm. I have the art book for the Spider Man PS2 game, PS4 game, PS2, PS4 <laughs> game, and uh, yeah, I looked through it. The the designs are really really fun some of them are like oh shit that's what mary jane actually looks like i see what you did there um but yeah uh no fit any gaming uh sal if you like that kind of comic book store you should come to krypton comics in omaha nebraska some of the guys that work there are horrible but back issues as far as the eye can see you guys rock <laughs> by the way thank you man i would love that I, the next time i find myself in omaha nebraska i will yeah. absolutely go because that's something we like to do like whenever i whenever i travel we go to a comic book store from that area. When, uh, whenever we take the Elseworlds exchange on, on the, the road. road yes. <laughs> uh, well, 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 when we finally pay off that big tour bus, Sal and me, and we take it across America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Asger's Web says, a clean comic shop just makes you feel so good. Agreed. It makes you feel less terrible about yourself when you're going in there. Indeed it does. Uh, Red Samurai, I just want to say thank you for all the entertaining videos, and Sal, you've been killing it these last few months with the Elseworlds with the Bard and Movie Batman pitch, as well as uh, White Knight and Alan Moore Superman on back issues. Well, thank you very much. That, that's, that's a testament to an, the incredible stock we have here on Elseworlds. We've got some great guests and some great co-hosts, uh, which make the show flawless. Uh, or effortless, I should say. Not mm -hmm. flawless. Uh, I'm screwing it up all the time. Uh, and Will, I, Will I am Golden says, I'm from Queens, New York, and there's hardly any comic shops less than an hour away. Yup. Really? You <laughs> think Queens would love that sort of thing? Again, I, living somewhere else, assume Queens to be a very trendy neighborhood. Yeah, and it is. Uh, you know, but it's going to be harder to find comic shops. Um, does the home of Spider-Man not have a comic shop in it? That seems like such an easy layup. Yeah, I know. I agree. Um, just as a quick uh, Google map search, um, I just wanted to know. I'm like, is there something near Queens? I mean, there's Midtown Comics is a warehouse near Queens. Uh, Silver Age Comics is a shop uh, on uh, 31st Street. And Anthony's Art Warehouse and Office sells comics. But uh, that's all I can do for you, my friend. Um, so, Joel, you're given a comic book store. Yes. We've talked about what works, what doesn't work. What are you going to do? How are you going to make it work? Get this, get this albatross off from around your neck. <laughs> yeah, really. Because well, they're like, you know, here you go, and then they run away. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, it's your problem now, bat smoke bomb away. Yeah. Well, as the chat kind of beat me to this one here, I thought this was quite clever. Uh, obviously, if you know anything about uh, the Canadian legal system, uh, marijuana just got legalized here not too long ago. And, yeah. it's, an, and it's an arms race out here for people opening dispensaries and, you know, uh, bake shops and everything else. And I'm like, well, I know just personally from my own experience, and the chat has thankfully proved me on this one, if we looked at the big Venn diagram of people who enjoy the marijuana and people who enjoy the comic books, there is a decent enough uh, little crossover there. And I figure if I devoted a shop and kind of split it in half where it's like, hey, here's where you get your edibles and your oils and your smokables and everything. And hey, if you if you like that uh, Jolly Green Giant strain right there, maybe uh, maybe you'll like this absolute edition of uh, Ditko <laughs> Dr. Strange. Tell you what, you buy this together, I'll throw in a cookie. Right. And they're like, well, that sounds like a great deal. Sign me up. For That's it. very exciting to me. Um, Jersey is getting closer to that, by the way. Our governor is very interested in legalizing, and I think it's going to happen. I know that they, I think they were supposed to make that decision in a, uh, a week ago or so, but uh, I am so unplugged from real world goings on that I have no goddamn idea. But uh, I will say uh, I don't blame you there. My only concern is this: is there smoking in your store? Because you're gonna you're gonna taint the comics. You're gonna make them smell like whatever it is that you're selling in your shop. Canadian anti-smoking laws are super harsh, so no, there would be no smoking here. Okay, also, too, all right. I, I couldn't do it in the province I live right now. I couldn't do it on in Ontario because much like tobacco and alcohol, the Ontario government wants to wet its beak and everything, and sure. when that eventually starts rolling, 
you'll need to buy your smokables at the I don't know the the marijuana control board as you would the liquor control board. I know when you and I were at Fan Expo, I pointed it out. You're like, yep, that's where they expect us to buy our booze from the government. Yeah, that was very weird. It was I was like, oh, I okay. And Gee. it's only this province. If you go to any other province, it's fine. But Ontario's like, no, we will make all the money on sin. That sounds very mobby. <laughs> boy, boy, does it ever. Not to not to put too fine a point on it or anything like that. Yeah, it totally is. So a dispensary comic shop. Now, what are you going to do with your back issue? You're going to have only new inventory. You're going to get. You, uh, yeah, you said basically new books. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a page from Legends. I will have a very small amount of new issues, make the rest of it very prestige, very collected edition, very trade-focused, like a bookstore, like mm -hmm. a Starbucks. But maybe, you know, try and diversify, too, by having some sort of web presence as well on top of this, where it's like, hey, did you miss this book? Well, here you go. You can buy it online. Right. I mean, you have to, you have, to have some kind of online presence, even if you plan on having a brick-and-mortar store. If oh, only yeah, because your clientele is is fluid. They're going to leave. Like, they're going to move. And mm -hmm. you know what? Like, make them stay with your store as long as you can by offering to mail them their books. Yep. Y you need a Facebook. You need an Instagram. You need all of these things. Heck, I, I am in a unique position, as are you, being a somewhat notable comic book YouTuber. Yeah. I would try and give the shop a thing on my channel. Be like, hey, come to, uh, I don't know, Gamma Bomb Comics or the Green Goblin's Lair. Because, mm -hmm. again, I'm, I'm doing both. I'd have to give it a cute name. Yep. Uh, come come see Joel of the Comic Multiverse and the Elseworld <laughs> Exchange here. That's true. And also when you have, like, events... Or new free comic book day, or like a special signing, or like you know a, a sale. You're gonna need some place to be able to reach out to your community and your clientele that isn't through like a mailing list. Of course, you're you're gonna have to Absolutely. you have to maintain a mailing list as well, which is frustrating. I, I would also try and reach out to my friends who are also YouTubers and be like, please, p please come stay for the weekend and come to my store so I can you know talk about it. Exactly. Uh, Silvery Cricket says, just an idea, but donate overstocked back issues to local schools. Cut down on storage of unmovable products while also getting new readers hooked. And good faith, too, for your store. That's a really good <clears throat> idea. I have seen a number of comic shops get down in the dirt with their communities in a big, bad way and still get totally hosed. But uh, it at shame. least makes them feel good inside. And they're doing some good work. Uh, but... It's harder. It, it, it's you got to run it like a business. You can't treat it like a family or community. No, it's like, here's an idea, too, I had. And I know I've mentioned this or too. The next time there is a big comic book movie, again, let's use Captain Marvel for an example because it's coming out. Yep. I, I would call uh, the owner of my local theater and be like, hey, man, when your showtimes get out, can I come by in the comic mobile and be like, hey, if you liked that Captain Marvel, buy some trades and single issues. Oh my god, yeah, getting like a, like, either like making a satellite store in an ice cream truck and driving to places where comic stuff is done yeah. is hilarious and great. I saw that uh, they did it on Comic Book Man, they tried to do that. It was like, it was a gimmick, oh, of they? course. It was, a, it was very gimmicky, but uh, I would love to see that actually done. Even just to hand out flyers, be like, hey, did you like the movie? Continue to follow the adventures of Carol Danvers at my store. Come yeah, exactly. To my store. Come to my store, though, please. Come to my store. But, but, but please come to my store. <laughs> um, J. Ron says, my local comic shop is owned by Angry John. Uh, he makes most of his money from rental properties and then sits behind the counter of his shop with a scowl on his face, annoyed that people are buying stuff. I knew a number of retailers like that. Your, my advice to you, my friend, ditch that motherfucker because you do not need his store. He needs your business. And if he Absolutely. wants to sell you books, he should learn to smile more. Uh, my uh, my question is: Was he angry, John, before or after he started working at a comic book store? Yeah, it, it, it'll be rough. Like it, it, that. I've known a number of comic book retailers. None of them are happy people anymore. Um, no, they don't seem that way. Mark Phillips in L.A., the store that does that is called The Comic Bug. It hosts podcasts, even brings in industry talent uh, to the store to talk to creators. Plus, it has a game store with the studio for artists to rent. Nice. Hmm. Uh, Asger's Web, I think a way to get more people into comics would be to just make nerd stores. Games, Blu-rays, comics. People who buy games, people who buy games will be like, oh, what's this? Yeah, uh, that's certainly where it's going, I think. Like, I think if you look at your FYEs, your Spencer Gifts, or uh, GameStops, comics are right up, right behind them. Um, I mean, like, the, the FYE in my area is so crappy, 
they sell mm-hmm. trades, and the trades are treated like total garbage. I've actually tweeted a picture or two of like how oh, they're ooh. ruined, and I'm like, "F you! You've ruined these comics. You have no respect for them. Um, that sucks." Uh, but if there was, it was part of the structure. If it was like integral to their whole business plan, maybe they might treat it a little more differently. But I think that's where it's going, for good or for ill. Uh, what, what do you think of this, To Turn your store into less of a store and more of a museum to these kinds of things. Hmm, yes. Well, the problem with museums is they're public-funded, usually. How are ah. you going to make any money with them coming to see things they can't take home with them? Damn. Now, that being said, you're not, off, you're not on the wrong foot here. Uh, preserving comics and the industry and, like, tr- tr- treating stores as kind of like an, you know, educational experience is not a bad notion. I think with some workshopping, you could turn that into, into some kind of moneymaker. L- like the secret stash, obviously. I mean, it is a museum to Kevin Smith. It is a straight-up Kevin, Kevin Smith. Yeah, but the world, the world can only sustain one of them. He tried to do two of them, and the other one closed pretty much within the, a year or so. Um, and even then, up. I remember uh, him talking about creating Comic Book Man and pitching it to like the guys, and him being like, I don't know if I need to own a comic book store anymore. It doesn't make me enough money, and so I think I'll close it. And they were like, and then he's he pitched it as a place to do a store or to do a show, and he was like, well, you guys got to do this show. And he's like, I don't know, I don't want to do that. And he goes, well, I'm closing the store. and Unless you do it. And he's like, oh. <laughs> no, no, no gun to your head or anything. No, that scares me, though, because, like, the show is over now. Does that mean the secret stash is far behind? And I've not asked them. I need to do that. Um, the Terror of Death uh, says there's a comic shop, Tate's, which has been around since the Great Depression of the 90s, and it's the oldest comic shop in South Florida. Well, there's your answer, wow. my friend. South Florida. <laughs> How many other comic shops are there? But that being said, I do, I, I, I'm do. i glad that your comic shop has survived for 30 years. That's great. Yeah, that uh, one's got to keep the history alive. Daniel Shepard, my comic shop does something cool with their YouTube page. No kidding. God damn it, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> No kidding. Um, each Tuesday night, they'll do a tour of the shop, pointing out the new books from publishers and the goings on with the store. It's a nice idea. I would also recommend you do it with like, your Facebook Live, build your community on, in a social media capacity, and then like if you have a if you're a comic book shop with a great big Twitter presence, do your do your periscopes and your live tweets. Yeah, there's a there's a place here locally that has a channel and it's uh, it's run by an old geek and basically it's just the young people who work there is like hey talk about Warren Ellis for a little bit right like read Warren's comics when they came out I will say comics shops I, I most comic shops I know that I know personally they have a YouTube channel hmm. they get like a couple hundred views per episode because like how many people are watching probably their clientele which is probably like a couple hundred people um, you know but I've also seen them try to leverage that into a YouTube career. And it's like, you gotta, you know, well, you know, learn the business and then maybe we'll talk. Um, when it comes to what I would do with a comic shop, they're like, here's the keys. Uh, I would build a online shop uh, exclusively. It would be Comic Pop. Mm. And I would maintain the relationship with Diamond I would create a pull list slash clientele base list that is international, that is right entirely on. built through our audience. I would sell comics directly to you, and mm. you and the shop would be through this channel. It would just be like, here are the books. Your books will be sold to you, and close like that it. store and keep all the stuff in inventory. At the studio, turn like probably I would rent another unit in, at, or another space in the in the studio we have. There's a bunch of different places you can rent, and turn that into like where the comic shop business is. And it would literally be a shipping receiving department. It would just be like tables and packing supplies, scales, postage, and just sell comics directly to the consumer. Um, I like that a lot. Cut yeah, out the middleman. Exactly. We would just not sell to uh, to a local clientele base now if we did well enough 
online. It might behoove us to have a brick and mortar store, but I pr- I, I feel like no. Um, based on our like, based on the concept of being given a comic book store or where the nature of the comic book store industry is going, I would not open a comic book store. I would be very hesitant to do it, and I would only do it online. What what about a comic book stand a la Lemonade? Right? Uh, no. <laughs> like, well, the only... No, no, yeah. Not even with comics spelt uh, wonderfully backwards? On right, with like, yeah, uh, a, a backwards C, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I legitimately think that, like, running a comic book store belongs to other people who are smarter and stronger, mm. willed, and uh, more financially stable than I am. I would turn it into just like, because that's what I want to do. Like, I would love to sell comics directly to the consumer. I would love to have a relationship with comicsology to the point where yeah. it's like, on Off the Rack, here's the books we recommend. Buy them directly here through us. Um, I would love to be able to just sell directly because that's kind of what we do. Like, yeah. we sell comics. At least if we're doing our jobs, we are. Because yeah. we're talking about how important and valuable and interesting and fun these comics are. And then we're like, now go to some guy over there and buy it. Like, what? why would I do that? Why shouldn't I sell directly to you? Like, and why shouldn't you want to do- Why buy from me? Because not only am I going to sell to you, you know, you're going to buy comics. We sell t-shirts, stickers, merch. You know, we would treat it very much like the Secret Stash, who does probably a lot Absolutely. of their business online versus the, their brick and mortar. Yeah. So you'd buy, you'd get comic, you'd, we would actually be more in, inclined to have more fun comic pop merch. Um, you know, so that would be what we would do. Now you're, you're selling me on this idea instead of me hawking book depository, I have a book depository, give me some books to sell. Exactly, exactly. I, 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 I like my local shops and I'm happy to support them. Um, but if I suddenly became one, I would do everything I could to be the main supplier to my audience at, at the very least my audience if not everyone's audience but you know for the you know but for, if, if I'm making extra money just especially if I have the relationship with Diamond and everything like that already established because I'm, I'm not trying to do that now I mean like it just sounds like a nightmare also I don't know the metrics like I don't know no. like what really sells and that's a shop that's sold that's selling to a region as opposed to selling to an international audience so you have no idea like mm. You know, that location might cater to a big Captain America crowd, but an international audience? Maybe not. Yeah, I, I would be worried, too, owning a comic shop, that it would suck all the fun out of it for me. Even sometimes just running a comic book YouTube channel. It's like, you know, I'm still having fun, and this is still my passion, and I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. But I fear the day it becomes too much work to where, you know, it starts to affect my outlook on it. Exactly. That's why you gotta, like, that's why you gotta diversify. Um... And so if it was a comic shop, hell, we'll sell manga, we'll sell all kinds of uh, comic ancillary stuff. I'd love to sell what the equivalent of a comic book store, which includes manga, statues, collectibles, Funko Pops, everything, through the channel. Um, Yeah, naturally. Yeah, so that's what we would do. Uh, And I think either way, you got yourself... Uh, a good idea on your hands. I love the idea of a mm-hmm. comic shop dispensary. I've not heard of one. I've, I've obviously, nope. it's obviously a popular idea in as much as people have had it, but I would love yeah. to see it actually in practice. Um, the sad part is you couldn't sell your weed online because no. you can't cross international borders or state no, lines here. No, you can't. And it's getting even weirder in between the provinces because the place I visit when I'm out in Victoria is called Trees, and they had to stop that. They're like, well, with new Ontario laws, we're not allowed to sell it anywhere because your government wants to sell it to you now. Yeah. So but that I, really undercuts the business. That sucks. Yeah, that's I'd, tough. I'd have to move to another province. Hilariously, too, that place, Trees, again, huge nerd place. Their logo is the White Tree of Gondor, and when I went in there, they were playing Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, that's dope. Dude, like, if it, just as a quick aside, you're a dispensary, you should also be selling, you should be, like, a gaming shop. For real. And you're like, yo, man, come on over here, get high, and then we'll kill some orcs. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's the funny thing. I talked to the owner of the thing like, oh, man, I love your logo. It's the White Tree of Gondor. And he's like, whoa, it is. Yeah, you know. How do you know that, man? <laughs> <laughs> or he had never thought of it before. Or it's like, well, it is the White Tree of Gondor, which, A, he knew what it was, and B, I blew his mind. Right. He's like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell 
I am the owl in the word now. <laughs> oh man. But uh so yeah, I, I think that that's that's the that's that's where we were going and that's where our, our conversation has led us. Uh I think that's everybody in the super chats too. So before we go, uh I just want to say thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Of course, if you want to catch more of this show, there's a little bit of an extra show. There's a PS to the show. Over on mm-hmm. patreon.com slash comic pop. It's a exclusive show that's only on there that f- comes from Elseworlds Exchange. You can catch every week. Uh, and you'll never find it anywhere else but there. So oh, yeah. some, some bomb-ass shit there. So check it out. Um, otherwise, yeah. we'll see you guys on the Purple Channel, uh, which is, of course, that place with the... With, well, yeah, you know how it is. Um, over that later. And, of course, if you are holding on to... Uh, what's it called? Uh, hope to see back issues tonight? You will! Because it's coming out after Tiffany's stream. So check that out. And, of course, Will I Am Golden in the Super Chat says bye. Uh, goodbye, Will. And goodbye, everybody else. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And, of course, thank you, Joel, for joining me. See you guys next time. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.